U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken is looking to persuade his European counterparts at the G7 to put pressure on China to stop aiding Russia as foreign ministers gather in Italy's Capri Island for a three-day meeting. Washington is hoping Europe can persuade Beijing to cut back on its support for Moscow amid the ongoing Ukraine war. Earlier this week, the U.S. State Department expressed concern about the transfer of materials from China to Russia that it says is helping Moscow rebuild and rearm. Washington has been urging Beijing not to supply weapons to Russia. While it has yet to present proof that Beijing is in fact doing so, it has denounced what it says is China's backdoor support for Moscow. Earlier today, Mr. Blinken met with his Ukrainian counterpart, Dmitry Koleba, and stressed the urgent need for U.S. Congress to step up support for Ukraine. If Putin is allowed to proceed with impunity, we know he won't stop at Ukraine, uh, and we can uh, safely predict that his aggression will continue. Other would-be aggressors around the world will take note and unleash their own aggressions, and we will have a world of conflict, not a world of peace and security. Our tensions in the Middle East are also overshadowing talks with diplomats calling for targeted new sanctions against Iran over its attack against Israel on Saturday. G7 leaders are expected to issue a united call for Israel to exercise restraint out of fears any retaliation could lead to a larger regional conflict. We have to ask Israel for a restraint answer to the Iranians' attack. We cannot escalate, we cannot go step by step, answering every time higher to a regional war. I don't want to exaggerate, but we are on the hedge of a war, a regional war in the Middle East, which will be sending shock waves to the rest of the world. And for more, Giles Gibson joins us live from Capri. Giles, Ukraine has been looking for more air defence in its war against Russia. Or looking at what has happened so far at talks so far for G7 foreign ministers, do you think it is getting that support? Well, Dmitry Kuleba, the Ukrainian foreign minister, was very clear that they are simply not getting enough of the type of support that they need, particularly air defence systems. And he made some very strong comments speaking just outside that hotel that you can see over my shoulder, which is where these talks are taking place. He said that he sees two strategies in terms of how the US and the UK and other Western allies are dealing with Israel versus how they're dealing with Ukraine. So when he talked about Israel, he said that their strategy was very clearly to prevent damage and death. That, of course, being a reference to the fact that the US and the UK stepped in to help shoot down drones and missiles that were fired by Iran over onto Israeli territory. And then he drew a comparison, or rather a contrast, with Ukraine, saying that their strategy has been to help Ukraine to recover from damage and then to express sympathy for the death of Ukrainian civilians. So Dmitry Kuleba not pulling any punches whatsoever in this appearance at the G7, telling his allies from the West that he needs to see them stepping up to give them more air defense systems in the same way that they have been stepping up in recent days to assist Israel to shoot down drones and missiles being shot by the Iranians. And Giles, of course, that defense of uh, Israel as Israeli airspace uh, over the weekend from that attack from Iran. That's just recent. There are other many issues, including what's happening in Gaza. What else did G7 foreign ministers discuss about tensions in the Middle East? So Antonio Tiani, who is the uh, Italian foreign minister who is chairing and hosting these talks here in Capri in that hotel just behind me there, uh, he started off the meeting talking about how uh, they need to work out how to sanction Iran to give a clear response to those missile and drone strikes by the Iranians on Israel. We are seeing already the individual members of the G7, or at least some of them, moving forward with sanctions against Iran. So we're seeing the US, for example, saying in the next few days or so, they will be bringing in sanctions that will target Iran's missile and drone programs. We're also seeing the European Council 
Uh, the European Union leaders who've been meeting in Brussels saying that they're going to bring in similar measures. So really what we're going to see over the next 24 hours as these talks wrap up is to see whether the G7 as a whole is going to coalesce against a very clear set of sanctions that they're going to bring against Iran. I think one thing that is looking much less likely, it's something that has been suggested in the last couple of days, but now we do not believe they're going to move forward with any sort of sanctions aimed at Iran's oil sector, because clearly they are concerned that any sort of that type of action would simply push up global oil prices at a time when many of these G7 members really are just starting to get to grips with that inflation that they've been struggling with for, for several years now. Oh, thanks for that. This is Giles Gibson reporting live there from Capri.